Today's brief has been created with open source information readily available on the internet as well as books. However, take it with a pinch of salt because some aspects have been kept secret due to said country's official secrets act. And sometimes Wikipedia is probably the best place to find the information. So sit back, relax, and let's get into today's briefing. The Tide class would be ordered in response to the large new Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers that were starting to be ordered and built. Their increased size and sustainable speed required the Royal Navy to develop a somewhat new large class of large fleet fast tankers to support these new supercarriers. The project would be known as Project Mars, standing for Military, Afloat, Reach and Sustainability. BMT Defence Services and A-Gear would be contracted to design this new class, producing a design that would be a derivative of the A-Gear 26 design, which was a Norwegian civilian tanker. However, it is good to note slightly later on that there was three designs the company would have, being A-Gear 10 of about 10,000 tonnes, A-Gear 18 of about 18,000 tonnes, and finally, a gear 26 of, funny enough, 26,000 tons. The Mars tankers would be, technically speaking, a a gear 39 based on their tonnage. This new class of vessel would displace in the vicinity of 39,000 tons, be 200.9 meters long, have a 28.6 meter beam, and a 10 meter draft. The class would be ordered from Daewoo shipyards in South Korea on the 22nd of February 2012 for a contract in the region of £452 million for the hulls and machinery. The class would be built with new safety improvements, including a double hull under new MARPOL regulations, as well as more streamlining over their predecessors. The hull would include a large bulbous bow for better sea keeping and reduction of drag, as well as a swept back forecastle similar to that of a late 19th century torpedo boat, just on a supersized scale, giving the overall forward part of the ship a similar look to the point-class Roros that the MOD charter. The ships would be powered by a combined diesel, electric and gas propulsion system, producing power to propel the ships up to 27 knots. Estimated range of the ships would be about 18,200 nautical miles at 12 knots, and the ship is fitted with tanks for diesel, Avcat and fresh water, with additional stowage for lubrication oil. The ship's complement would be 63 standard RFA crew members, with an additional 46 non crew, including air crew, Royal Marines, as well as trainees. The ships would be fitted with off the shelf three sharp eye navigational radars, two in the Echo Foxtrot band, and one in the India slash Juliet band. The weapons would be as fitted two 30mm air CG mounts with mountings for, but not with, two phalanx close-in weapon systems. The ships are built with a large fly deck aft with a hangar, large enough to take one Merlin helicopter, although the ships can take uh, to two Lynx helicopters. These ships are replenishment vessels, so they need to replenish ships at sea, and as such they are designed to have three liquid derricks, one port and two starboard to transfer oil, diesel and avcat. In the quarterdeck, they also have a large reel for at stern replenishments. In November of 2012, the class would be losing its designation of the Mars for something a bit more traditional. They would then become the Tide class, making them the second class of tankers to be named, fun enough, after tides. They would be named in honour of four Cold War Tide class oilers, with the lead ship being named after the Falklands veteran. RFA Tide Spring. The four ships would be named RFA Tide Spring, Tide Race, Tide Surge, and Tide Force, with the first ship having its first steel being cut in June 2014, and not being laid down until December of the same year. Launching was in April 2015, and her naming ceremony would happen in October. The expected sailing date for the UK for fitting out with all RFA equipment was to be the spring of 2016. However, the ship would remain conducting trials due to what well, apparently the Minister of Procurement, Harriet Baldwin, claimed was the ships were delayed due to installation of a multi-cable transit insulation in accordance with new legislation regulations for new vessels. 
Tide Force would subsequently reach the United Kingdom via the Panama Canal in the spring of 2017, for docking in Falmouth for fitting out of comms equipment, IFF systems, and as well as other military equipment. Tide Spring would attempt her first rounds of her career with HMS Queen Elizabeth, who was fun enough also attempting her first RAS, but this would be cooled off due to really bad weather in late February 2018. But training was conducted with a full approach, sending in formation, and a simulated breakaway being performed. By April, she would participate in the biannual Excise Joint Warrior 18-1. This was the largest NATO exercise in Europe. She would operate out of Plymouth, conducting BOST as well as operating out of Fowles Lane and Birkenhead for the next 11 months until she went into dry docking at Birkenhead for maintenance. In September, she would take part in the Royal Navy's largest response to Russian surface warships in the North Sea and the Barents Sea, whilst deployed with HMS Sutherland and other units from America, Denmark and Norway. She is currently at sea off the south coast and she is currently fitted with both Phalanx Closing Weapon Systems. Tide Race would be the second ship laid down, been laid down in June 2015, been launched in November and having the naming ceremony happening in December 2016. She would enter service with the RFA in August of 2018. She will participate in Joint Warrior 19-1 in April of 2019, as part of an amphibious assault group with HMS Defender, Kent, the LPD, RFA Line Bay, as well as HMS Albion. After this was finished, she would make trips to Plymouth, Liverpool and Faz Lane. At the beginning of 2020, she would enter a six-month refit in Birkenhead for major upgrades to her firefighting equipment and uptakes. In June, she would sail for sea trials and she would go alongside in Gibraltar. She is currently anchored inside the breakwater in Plymouth. Tide Surge would be the third ship laid down. Her keel laying date would be December 7th, 2015, with launching on June 4th, 2016. She would be named on the 20th of August 2017 and she would enter service with the RFA on February 20th, 2019. She would conduct her first RAS with her sister ship, RFA Tide Force, and the older RFA Fort Victoria, where they would assist Tide Force's sea trials. These two ships would make their first Tide on Tide RAS in history. By June, she was operating in the vicinity of Gibraltar, when 4-2 Commando would use her as a base to capture the Iranian tanker Grace 1, who was fully enough believed to be heading towards Syria, which, ironically enough, it kinda was. Now, Grace 1 would end up being impounded in Jib, which would be deemed by Iran as an act of piracy, which begs the question of, and makes it funny that, imagine how far pirates have actually come if you think the RN was acting in piracy. The fact that you're using a tanker to board a tanker. Hmm. It's not the greatest of pirates, I have to admit. So, she would then be used to great effect in the Norwegian and North Seas, alongside the Atlantic and Arctic. She would pretty much get around a lot. By October 2019, she would take part in her first BOST, before partaking in Excise Joint Warrior 19-2, where she would make a RAS with the USS Donald Cook. Apparently, this would be the first RAS for the Tide class with an American ship. In 2020, she would go alongside Birkenhead for a refit, where she currently remains to this day. RFA Tide Force would be the last ship of the class. She would lay down on Christmas Eve 2015, been launched on January 27th, 2017, and having her naming ceremony on January 24th, 2018. She would enter service with the RFA on July 30th, 2019. Before she'd even entered service, she made a couple of class firsts. She made a RAS with Tide Force. She would also be the first ship of the class to conduct a RAS with a foreign vessel, the vessel being the Netherlands offshore patrol vessel, HN LMS Friesland. After commissioning, she would join the Carrier Strike Group as the assigned tanker, deploying on Westland 19 with HMS Queen Elizabeth, the frigate Northumberland, and the destroyer Dragon. In 2020, she would RV with SNMG-1 to provide replenishment before returning to home waters for flight operation training, as well as responding to a mayday from a Dutch-flagged ship to provide assistance. 
In June, she would conduct the first nighttime replenishment at sea with HMS Queen Elizabeth. This would give her a big tick in the FOSS package for Queen Elizabeth in the evolution department. I, for one, actually took part in that evolution, being a hose handler for the about two hour evolution. She finally took part in Exercise Joint Warrior 20-2, alongside the carrier Queen Elizabeth, RFA Fort Victoria, HMS Diamond, Defender, Northumberland, Kent, HN LMS Evertson, and the USS The Sullivans. RFA Tide Force is currently alongside in Faz Lane. The Norwegian Navy would acquire a single vessel being named HN OMS Maud. She would be ordered on June 28, 2013, and being based on the Aegir 18R. However, this vessel would not be 18,000 tons, but be about 27,500 tons. She would have a length of 183 meters, a beam of 25.9 meters, and have a draft of about 8.62 meters. The ship is propelled by a cod lod system, giving her a speed of about 18 knots for about 10,000 nautical miles. The ship would be designed with a larger hospital facilities than her preceding tide class. This would include about 48 beds, as well as a CT scanner and other hospital requirements. Like the tide class, the ship would also be carrying fuel and stores for the Norwegian fleet. Her steel would be cut on April 14, 2015, with delivery planned to be about late September 2016. However, due to defects and part of the ship not being up to standard, she would finally be commissioned into the Navy in May 2019. So that's it guys, thank you very much for watching, hopefully you learned something new. Don't forget to like the video before you leave, leave a comment and uh, give a suggestion of what you think I should do next, as well as if you have a question you want me to answer, please put it in the comment section on the pinned post. Apart from that, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, I recommend doing so because I have some very interesting content coming out very soon. If you want to support the channel, there is a Patreon page, but that's entirely up to you. If you do so, there is some interesting perks to actually being a Patreon to the page. Apart from that, all you need to do is say thank you very much, have a nice day, and uh, here's a sneak peek at uh, next week's video.